Tonight we're going to take a look at three related faults. Uh, one of them is a very unusual one, so that's why I wanted to talk about this. This all relates to a relatively new unit that's got under 800 hours on it. And what happened is a temperature sensor module failed. And it's the module that's mounted on the after treatment. And this is the unitized new style after treatment where everything is in one package. And it's not all that long. Uh, it's bigger in diameter, but not as long as the older traditional after treatments were. And you've got four temperature probes coming out of one module. And you're uh, measuring the inlet to the after treatment or inlet to the cat, same thing. You're measuring inlet to the DPF filter, which is right after the cat. Then you're measuring the temperature out of the DPF that goes into the decomp section of the after treatment which isn't all that long. It's probably only eight inches long. Uh, and it's just a big hollow spot on a ring. And the, the, def, the uh, def injector bolts on top of that. The, the new style, by the way, the UL2. And then you've got, uh, there's a temperature sensor there that measures the temperature going into the SCR. And the, that temperature sensor measures, it's really measuring out of the DPF, but it's also measuring into the SCR. So sometimes when you're logging this and looking at a data log, you'll see the traditional five sensors, three for the after treatment and two for the SCR. But you have to remember that the DPF outlet and SCR inlet are the same sensor, and that's why they read the exact same numbers. There's not an extra sensor in there. And then you've got the last sensor, which is out of the SCR, and they need to know the temperature that's going to be affecting that uh, knock sensor at the end of the end of the uh, after treatment there. So the um, the inlet temperature, the engine has to know that so that it knows that it's warming the cat up enough to do an active regeneration, and it needs to know the exhaust temperature when it's going to do passive when you're when you're running down the road or working the machine, whatever. Uh, then. After the cat, that's there so that it knows that it's dosing fuel. Uh, it commands it, but it doesn't know it, except that it sees temperature changes. It has to know the cat's working. And then it's got a temperature sensor after the DPF, so it knows if the DPF is going to melt itself because it was too loaded. It's watching temperature there. It's watching to see if it's getting hot enough to clean itself. And then it's watching after the SCR to see if uh, it can def if it can dose def fluid if it's warm enough for that system to, to work properly. In this case, what happened is the module on the module that those sensors all uh, are hooked into stopped randomly communicating with the ECM. So it would work sometimes and not work sometimes, and that's why you'll see a high a, a high fault count because it would work, stop working, work, stop working. So let's see what happened when uh, that took place. And then we'll look at some timestamps and, and a couple of the uh, faults that it drove along with the fault for the module. So let's take a look right at the bottom. We've got one count of 6771. And that happened, if you look to the right, at 85 hours and 26 seconds before we hooked up to this. So the customer had already called that there was lights on and we headed out and hooked up to it. And these were the faults we pulled out of it. Now, if you read the tree for 6771, it's a little uh, disheartening. It says that the wrong after treatment system has been installed, installed on the engine. And, uh, <clears throat> but not to panic because this thing ran for 700 hours, fine. So you have to stop and go, well, what caused that? Well, if we look farther up, we'll see fault code uh, 4151. And there's 124 counts. And that is the after treatment diesel particulate filter sensor module had an abnormal update rate. So that module started intermittently not communicating with the ECM. And I suspect at one point it sent some information that was really off the wall. Now, when you uh, 
build an engine and you put an after treatment system on, you get all, the, this is the OEM, we don't have to worry about this. They get all the right parts, they put them together for the system. And when you run that engine the first 50 hours, the ECM learns the pieces that are on there. The, the modules basically marry themselves to each other, just like they do on a car. If you, if you have a newer car and the module fails and you go get one from a boneyard or somewhere, it's not going to work if you don't have someone that can program it properly. And sometimes you even can't do that. You just have to get a new module. But everything marries itself. So uh, fault code 6771 will tell you that for the first 50 hours of operation, there's a special diagnostic that runs that verifies that all these parts are correct and will work together. And then after that, that diagnostic doesn't run again. So as long as those parts uh, don't change, and you can change a module if it fails, as long as you put the same part number on. Um, that's what's important. That's why everything's by part number. So uh, 6171 wasn't a problem. We're going to call that a glitch. 4151, 124 counts. That was the actual problem. I did actually have to call uh, the Cummins tech line and they had to go through this with me and then they gave me a uh, basically an approval code to go ahead and replace that module because this was so new. And then uh, the top in the yellow, which was fault code 4863, there was 41 counts. And that says, after treatment SCR inducement active condition exists. Whenever you see after treatment SCR operator inducement, operator inducement simply means that the machine or the truck or whatever it is was operated with a fault code active that in this case was affecting the SCR system and that temperature module Probably the part of it that wasn't working right was sensing temperature for the SCR. I'm guessing that. I don't know. And so uh, it says, hey, the guy, the guy ran this with the fault active, so that's what caused the inducement or the D-rate. A lot of times on machines that drive hydraulics, they will just keep running them because the the engine still makes plenty of torque to run the hydraulic pump for what they're doing. If it's a crane or something and they gotta they gotta walk it, well that's a whole different story because it takes a lot of horsepower and torque to walk the machine, but it doesn't take much to do picks or or a swivel or anything else. So that's what this ended up being, and we replaced the module and ran it and cleared the faults and everything was great at the end of the day. Thanks for your time. Have a good day and see you next time at Engine Shop Joe.